Right. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for the great talk by both of you. And um, if there are further questions, please post them in the chat. So we can move on to the last talk of the session. So is that, if I understand correctly, Matteo Perez will um, now be the speaker. Yes. All right, so can you hear me? I, yes, we can hear you perfectly. I will see your screen. I okay. guess you can directly go ahead. So welcome Mathieu Perez for, uh, for the last talk. The presentation will be on model-free reinforcement learning for le lexicographic omega ray objectives. Um, please let us hear what this is about. Go ahead. Thank you. So um, as you guys may be familiar, there's a lot of work in reinforcement learning and this requires a reward function. And frequently, people specify the reward functions by hand and simply tune the reward function until eventually the agent of the behavior matches what they want. So instead in this work, we're thinking that perhaps someone could instead specify a, formal, a set of formal objectives in linear temporal logic and then specify the order that they'd want that they, their preference. And then um, this can get automatically converted into a correct reward function. So I'd like to thank my collaborators, Ernst Moritz Hahn, Sven Cheve, Fabio Semenzi, Ashtosh Tavetti, and Dominic Wojcik. So the models we're concerned with are Markov decision processes, or MDPs. An MDP consists of a set of states, a set of actions, a transition function, and a labeling function. The transition function tells us the system dynamics. Given a state action pair, it gives us a probability distribution over next states. The labeling function takes a transition tuple and assigns it a letter. So on the right, I have an example MDP where I've denoted the states by boxes and the transitions by arrows. So as an example, say we start in the initial state and we select the action beta. With probability P, we go to the state S2 and emit the letter B. From S2, say we take alpha, we go to S0, this emits the letter C, and say we take beta again, and with probability one minus B, we go to S3, this emits the letter B, and from S3, we can take alpha emitting the letter A, and we take this transition forever as this is the uh, only transition. So what we can do is we can take a strategy for controlling the system and we can have this get converted into a probability distribution over infinite strings. And now we compose properties about these infinite strings that we'd like to satisfy. So we do this with omega regular objectives. So omega regular objectives are an extension of regular languages to infinite words and are accepted by omega automata. The type of omega automata we use are good for MDP Buhi automata. Buhi means that the acceptance condition is that we see so-called accepting edges infinitely often. Good for MDP means that the non-determinism in the automaton can be resolved on the fly when it is composed with an MDP. Please see our Takas 20 paper for details. So um, a natural way to get these sorts of properties is to specify a linear temporal logic objective and have it get translated into an omega automaton. So on the right, I have an example of good for MDP Buhi automaton for the LTL property, finally globally A, which means eventually the string contains only A's. So starting in initial state, if we read B, C, B, we take the self loop and stay in the initial state. On the next letter, A, we have a moment of non-determinism. We can either stay in this initial state or we can go to Q1 if we think we'll be able to see A's forever. In this case, we'll go to Q1. As we continue reading A's, we'll take the self loop, which is accepting as denoted by the screen dot. And since we see accepting edges infinitely often as we read the rest of this word, um, this automaton accepts. For lexicographic omega regular objectives, it's as it seems. So we're given a set of omega regular objectives listed by priority. We maximize the probability of satisfying the first objective, then maximize the probability of satisfying the second objective amongst the strategies to maximize the first and so on. So to motivate reinforcement learning, what if our system is unknown? So in reinforcement learning, we have an MDP with an unknown transition function. We also are given a reward function, which takes the transition tuple and maps it to a real number we call a reward. And we also have a discount factor. So an infinite run of the system is converted by the reward function into an infinite sequence of rewards. So the traditional reinforcement learning objective is to maximize the expected discounted sum of these rewards. There's two main categories of reinforcement learning algorithms, model-based and model-free. In model-based, the agent, of, uh, when it observes the system, produces an internal model of how the system works. In the model-free case, this, the agent uses the observ observed transitions to directly produce a strategy. So there's many popular algorithms being developed in the second category, and we'd like to maintain compatibility. So specifically, we want to translate lexicographic omega regular objectives to reward function on the fly so that we can synthesize strategies for unknown MDPs with model-free reinforcement learning. So as a special case, let's consider having only one objective. So this is what we talk, tackled in our Takas 2019 paper. So we're going to let the agent observe the MDP state and the automaton state. This forms the product MDP. 
will have non-determinism in the automaton be resolved by the agent as additional actions. So all we're left with is how do we assign the reward? An initial naive attempt would be to get plus one reward on accepting edges and no reward otherwise. But this doesn't work. Why is this the case? So maximizing this reward is equivalent to maximizing the expected frequency of seeing accepting edges. While maximizing for the BP objective is the same as maximizing probability that the frequency is positive. These are not equivalent. As a concrete example, if we have two possibilities, we can either see accepting edges on every other step with probability one, or we can see accepting edges twice as often, but probably two thirds, this reward will give higher value to this second uh, strategy, which achieves lower probability. So we need a different reward function. Instead, let's introduce an additional parameter, data. On accepting edges with probably one minus data, we'll sign plus one reward and terminate. So let's see what this accomplishes. For large discount factors, satisfying traces are given a value near one. So satisfying traces, we'll see accepting edges infinitely often, and with probability one, we'll trigger this transition and receive plus one reward. And because we're discounting, get a value slightly less than one. For large discount factors, traces that are not satisfying are given a value of epsilon, where we can make this epsilon arbitrarily small by continuing to decrease the probability that we jump. So satisfying traces are given a value near one. Traces that are not satisfying are given a value near zero. This is exactly what we want. Let's go back to the full case. Note that we actually need additional memory for lexicographic omega regular objectives in general. To see why, I have this example in the middle. So our first property is to continue seeing A's. And our second most important property is to continue seeing B's. We can satisfy both of these with probability one by starting in S1, going to S0, then going to S1, then going to S2, and going back to S1. So we go left and right through this MDP. However, note that when we're in S1, we actually need an additional bit of memory to tell us whether or not we should be moving left or we should be moving right at this particular time step. So we cannot simply use an off-the-shelf lexicographic reinforcement learning tool with the single objective re reward reduction I've shown before because this will produce memoryless strategies when memory full strategies are optimal. So we need a new reduction. So we're gonna introduce a memory gadget. This memory gadget is gonna be a list of objectives for which we've seen an accepting edge in its automaton. Note that this looks similar to degeneralization if you're familiar with that. So we're gonna call this the tracker. We're also gonna give the agent an additional cash in action which resets the tracker. Below, I have an example tracker for where we have two properties. Um, so as an example, say that we start in this initial state where our bit vector indicates that we haven't seen accepting edges for any of the properties yet, and say that we see an accepting edge for the first property. We'll flip its bit to one. So I've also omitted the uh, self loops here. So if we see no accepting edges, the tracker state will remain the same. So how do we assign reward? We're gonna introduce a parameter as before, zeta. And when the tracker is in state i, the agent can cash in. With probability one minus theta, this reset results in a reward, a reward ri and termination. So for large discount factors in zeta, the expected discounted reward from cashing in from state i infinitely often with probability p is approximately p times ri. So if we pick the right ri, we'll be able to get the result that we want. So what we want is one will map vectors of probabilities of satisfaction to, the, to real numbers so that the lexicographic order is preserved. Note that since the MDPs we are considering are finite, there is a minimum amount p min that any element in this vector can change by. So we're going to let v be this weighting of each of the probabilities, where we're going to give an exponentially higher weight for more important uh, uh, properties. And our reward is going to be exactly the same, except we're going to do this instead of on the probability vector, we're going to do this on the bit vector from the tracker. So as a concrete example, below, let's say we have two properties, a1 being the more important one. And uh, in this case, uh, our f, it will be six. And so we're gonna take all of the, so I've denoted in the, by these dots, all of the possible probabilities we can have in our vector. Um, and so I'll take the probabilities for first and I'll scale it up by f. And now let's look at all the possible combinations. So if the first property is satisfied with probability zero, then all of the possible combinations for the satisfaction of the second property will give all of these values for, for v. And then if we move the probability satisfying A up an increment, then we'll get all of these values and so on. And so what we've done is we've taken a, the, the uh, probability vector and we've mapped it to a real number so that the lexicographic order has been preserved. So let me summarize the reduction. So we're given K, good for MDP, BP automata, listed in prioritized order and an MDP. And we're gonna create a reward on the fly as follows. We're gonna add a memory gadget that keeps track of the indices of the automata for which we've seen accepting edges for. The agent will observe everything, the MDP state, all the automata states, and the tracker state. The agent will have actions to control the MDP, 
automaton on determinism, and additional cache-in action on the tracker. We're going to introduce two parameters, zeta and f. When the agent uses the cache-in action, we're going to reset the tracker. With probably one minus zeta, we will assign this exponentially weighted reward, and we'll terminate. Otherwise, we'll sign no reward and let the agent continue. So for sufficiently large zeta, f, and discount factor, the optimal discounted reward strategy maximizes the lexicographic omega regular objective. So uh, we implemented this in our tool, MongoJerry, which is available at pld.colorado.edu slash MongoJerry. And note that all of our hyperparameters are relatively small. So the largest f we needed in our examples were uh, 20. And the largest data we needed was 0.99. So this is, um, there's an interesting case captured by our reduction, which is when we set f to ones. So this is no longer maximizing for the lexicographic um, objective, but is instead maximizing the sum of the probabilities of satisfaction of all the properties. Um, this is like an interesting case captured by our reduction. Um, but let's look at this particular example here, where uh, robots four by seven, where we have the property order two, one, three. So in this example, we have a robot moving on a grid world. And the robot can pick up, down, left, and right. When it picks a direction, it moves one cell in that direction with probability half, and two cells in that direction with probability a half. When it hits a wall, it remains in the cell next to the wall. So our most important property is to always avoid these red cells. We can definitely do this with probability one. Our second uh, objective is to continue seeing ones and twos, these one, cells labeled one and two, or to continue seeing these cells labeled three and four. So because there's a path to three and four, let's see if we can do this. So first, our agent will move up the column from the initial cell three, zero to the cell three, three. Then it'll move right to the cell five, three, and then, uh, or try to move right to the cell five, three. And if it can, it'll move down to three, four. But we probably have to get stuck in the cell four, three, in which case it'll simply move up. Um, for this final prop, in order to remain, in order to maximize probability satisfied in the first objective. And for the last property, it's not, um, it's not possible to reach this green cell. So our last property is to re eventually reach this green cell. It's not possible to reach this green cell while still uh, satisfying the first objective with probability one. So in summary, here's what the strategy looks like. We move up and we try and move right. If we succeed to get into the cell 5-3, we move down and, and satisfy the second property. But if we are unlucky and we get stuck in 4-3, the only safe action is to move up. So this was the strategy computed by the model free reinforcement learning algorithm Q learning with these hyperparameters. And I've omitted some of the additional states for clarity of the presentation. So in summary, we have shown a reduction from lesser graphic omega regular objectives to discounted reward that can be done on the fly. This allows the use of model free reinforcement learning to synthesize strategies without having a priori knowledge of the system. We demonstrated on small examples that this can be effective in practice. Please see our paper for more details. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matteo. This was quick, very nice. Um, I think there's a question from the audience. I just saw a hand raised. I can't see it now. If you have a question, please unmute yourself and ask. That seems not to be the case. We can, we have some time left. Um, I have a few questions. I can start. So um, first, um, your, your, your overall goal is, all the question is, and I, this relates to mine, um, why do you say specifically model free? Why not model based? So what is the reason for that? So if, if I think about the sort of, um, the short answer is you can definitely do model based with this particular reward. The thing about doing model based is one might say, well, if you're modeling the entire system, it depends on how you do model based. If you're doing very, very strong model based and you're actually going to produce a probability, like the estimate the transition matrix of the entire system, then someone might say, well, simply send this to a model checker. Don't even use reinforcement learning in this case. Simply model the system by estimating the probabilities directly and then send the system to a model checker. So, but of course this requires you to model the entire system and all of the probabilities. Um, but if you want to use, if instead you're gonna have something that's a little bit uh, weaker and you'll have some model, but you're not gonna have an explicit model of everything, then you can definitely use this reward structure with model based. So the point of having something like this be on the fly is that you can use any re, uh, reinforcement learning technique. So you can use model free and you can use model based. But um, uh, hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I guess um, to, to follow on that, I mean, with the example that you have, you showed this very shortly, your um, slide, the examples were not very large, right? So these could also just be, um, you can just capture the transition matrix and learn these. Yeah, so these want... examples, uh, let me just double check. I think our largest example was um, the largest lexicographic example had uh, 700,000 states. 
Um, yeah. So yeah, it's definitely possible to brute force this problem and learn the, the probability transition matrix. But part of the idea for our experiments were we use tabular Q learning, which is sort of one of the very first model-free reinforcement learning algorithms invented. Um, the, the hope here is that people use this with other techniques. But the nice part about model, the Q learning, this tabular Q learning in particular, is that we do get convergence guarantees in the limit, which for some uh, very modern, especially in deep reinforcement learning, we sort of lose these guarantees. But even in this case, I think it's valuable to have a reward structure, which is faithful. So even if you're using yeah. some heuristic, it's nice to know that at least the reward structure is 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 valid. That makes sense. And with you, with your tool Mongo, Jerry, would you, would you be able to also plug in uh, some state-of-the-art deep reinforcement learner? Like, I don't know, some... Uh, a DQN or some uh, actor critique method, or is this not, not meant to be easily extended upon these? So right uh, now that things. functionality isn't available in the in mm -hmm. our, um, uh, in that particular tool for testing, we actually have an integrated model checker. So the idea is once you produce strategies, you actually uh, send these directly to the internal model checker we have and check that the probabilities are what you would expect. So this is, so our tool right now is primarily like intended for sort of the development of, of these algorithms. So, um, but we are thinking about definitely adding this sort of functionality in the future where you can export a model. So our, our we take uh, PRISM and uh, HOA. So PRISM for the MDP and then HOA for the automaton. And um, uh, we can both, we can do model checking and the reinforcement learning, but our reinforcement learning is tabular in this case. Yeah, very nice. And this makes sense. And I have a, a sh short question afterwards. So um, what you're doing now is you, you say, I, um, what is the probability to satisfy an omega regular property in your um, MDP, right? Yes. The, and um, what about almost sure properties where you um, really need to get to probability one or zero? Would this also work? Yes, so this is for that full quantitative case. So if the probabilities are one, then you'll find that strategy. If it's 0.99, then you'll also find that. So in this that case, it's for that the, wouldn't, yeah. And the discounted reward setting wouldn't, make a problem here? Yeah, so this is this is one of the sort of caveats of this, is for discounting, fundamentally, even though it is technically infinite horizon, the discounting means that you're you're like valuing yeah. the deep future less and less. So what you actually need to do in this case, if you're going to use discounted RL, is you actually need to make sure your discount factor is sufficiently large, which you can definitely do yeah. for finite MVPs. So this is- Because I would, guess if, I would guess if somebody says almost sure verification and omega regular, and they would be interested in uh, the almost sure guarantee and not the in the limit uh, with discounts that would work guarantee. Um, yeah. But so on the other hand, other people might say these are too strong anyways. I mean, it's a matter of taste, I guess. Yeah, so if in this case, um, the reinforcement learning algorithm has guarantees for convergence in the limit. And if you, or at least a particular one that we've, we've used and you can use anything. Um, but like, yes, this is this is sort of a caveat. If you're using, so there's different categories of, of reinforcement learning um, and the most popular, the one which has been studied the, the best is discounted reinforcement learning, for which there's the most algorithms. And um, in this case, you do need to make sure your discount factor is sufficiently large. But thankfully, once it's above that threshold, you're done. So um, you'll be yeah. able to, you'll get optimal strategies. So um, yeah, for finite MDPs, it's not like you need to continue increasing your discount factor forever. It's there's a threshold. And once your discount factor is larger than that threshold, you're done. And you can just keep your discount factor at that, at that, that um, magnitude. But you might also ask, what about average reward reinforcement learning? The unfortunate aspect is uh, people haven't developed average reward reinforcement learning algorithms for the uh, general, for general MDPs that aren't uh, completely model-based, where you simply solve the problem offline after estimating the probability structure, the transition structure. Understand. Okay. Well, uh, Matteo, thanks a lot for this nice talk, and um, uh, thanks all speakers and thanks the audience for attending. Um, this wraps the session up. Um, please now go to WonderMe to um, to try to interact in the um, in the in the break and in the break session. And then um, thanks everybody, and see you in the next session. Bye bye. <laughs>